Hi, my name is Lurlyn Wagner. I'm a previous tea room tea shop owner. I remember as a child seeing my Chinese grandfather sipping a cup of tea after work. It still brings back fresh memories. Tea is often referred to one of the world's oldest beverages. So come and follow me. Follow me to a journey happened 5,000 years ago. I love tea and I love to travel. Researchers at Harvard School of Public Health, Department of Nutrition, considered tea as one of the top healthiest beverage of choice. There are 20,000 different varieties of teas in the world. It is an ancient drink and dates back 5,000 years ago. Tea is rich in history. Tea ceremony is a time-honored institution in Japan rooted in the principles of Zen Buddhism and founded upon the reverence of the beautiful in the daily routine of life. Tea has played a central role in several important historical events, such as the Opium War and the American Revolution, the Boston Tea Party. Tea markets are growing. 87% of millennials drink tea. Baby boomers are the leading drinkers of tea. Now, the tea market worth $12.6 billion by 2023. Tea today is perceived as the quintessential British drink. Tea is a symbol of elegance. Taking time for a cup of tea is considered by millions to be a moment of calm and enjoyment in our hectic lives. My favorite tea mantra, enjoy life sip by sip, not gulf by gulf. Hi, my name is Lurlyn Wagner, and today's presentation is entitled, The Origins and History of Tea. So sit back, relax, pop the kettle on, and enjoy a cuppa. The History and Origins of Tea, presented by Lurlin T. Wagner. It is difficult to tell who invented tea or where and how the first cup of tea came to be brewed. Legend has it that the discovery of tea was made when Emperor Xianu of China came across the Camellia Sinensis plant back in 2737 BC. A few leaves steered by the wind fell into a pot of boiling water as his troops took refuge under the tree, giving the world its first taste of tea. Others claim that tea originated in 1500 BC to 1046 BC in China and was discovered by the Shang Dynasty as a medicated drink. There are other gruesome tales that tell of the origin of tea. The founder of Chan Buddhism, Bodhidharma, accidentally fell asleep for nine years and woke up in such disgust that he decided to cut off his own eyelids. It's believed that this took roots in the ground and grew to become the first tea bushes. Whether or not these legends have any real facts attached to them can never be decoded. But the fact of the matter is that tea has played a significant role in Asian culture for centuries and become a staple beverage. It is not just a curative but also a status symbol and it comes as no surprise that its popularity spread to the world over the years. The classic of tea is the first book on tea in the world. It was written by Lu Yu, founder of Chinese Tea Ceremony, completed around 750 AD. It systematically introduced history, producing origins, efficacy, cultivation, harvesting, processing, brewing methods, and drinking of tea 
in and before the Tang Dynasty. The origins and history of tea presented by Lurlin T. Wagner. It is difficult to tell who invented tea or where and how the first cup of tea came to be brewed. Legend has it that the discovery of tea was made when Emperor Shenong of China came across the Camellia sinensis plant back in 2737 BC. A few leaves steered by the wind fell into a pot of boiling water as his troops took refuge under the tree, giving the world its first taste of tea. Others claim that tea originated in 1500 BC to 1046 BC in China and was discovered by the Shang Dynasty as a medicated drink. There are other gruesome tales that tell of the origin of tea. The founder of Chan Buddhism, Buddhidharma, accidentally fell asleep for nine years and woke up in such disgust that he decided to cut off his own eyelids. It's believed that this took roots in the ground and grew to become the first tea bushes. Whether or not these legends have any real facts attached to them can never be decoded. But the fact of the matter is that tea has played a significant role in Asian culture for centuries and become a staple beverage. It is not just a curative but also a status symbol and comes as no surprise that its popularity spread to the world over the years. The classic of tea is the first book of tea in the world. It was written by Lu Yu, founder of Chinese tea ceremony. Completed around 750 AD, it systematically introduced history, producing origins, efficacy, cultivation, harvesting, processing, brewing methods, and drinking of tea in and before the Tang Dynasty. Camellia sinensis, the tea plant. The Camellia sinensis, or the tea plant, is an evergreen shrub. It is originated from the southwestern part of China. The leaves are glossy and it has serrated edges. It is exactly the same size and shape as the bay leaf. There are two varieties of Camellia sinensis. The Camellia sinensis sinensis, which is a Chinese tea, which grows in high elevation and cooler climates. And these teas are more for green tea and white tea. On the other hand, the Camellia sinensis assamica, Assam or Indian tea, grows in a tropical and hot climate wherein there's rainfall. The leaves are bigger and larger, and these teas are more for black teas, puer teas, and oolong tea. Believe it or not, all tea comes from one tea plant, the Camellia sinensis. The tea is believed to be discovered sometime between 30th century BC and 21st century BC. It was initially used as medicine in ancient China, where people chewed on fresh leaves for their refreshing and invigorating effect before they learned to brew it in water to make a drink out of it. By 722 BC to 221 BC, the Chinese started to brew the leaves, adding to the concoction other ingredients like ginger, tangerine peel, and scallion. This concoction was mixed with rice and eaten as a meal, rather than enjoyed like a beverage. It was only between 202 BC and 220 AD that tea evolved as a beverage in China, offering as a refreshing drink to officials and noble lords. By then, varieties of tea had been discovered and rare kinds were brought to emperors as gifts because it was a coveted trade object. It is also during this period that trading of tea became a commercial activity. 
In the years that followed, between 420 and 589 BC, tea drinking became popular as a Chinese tradition. Its consumption increased rapidly, and methods for cultivating tea started to be explored to keep up with the demands. Tea cakes and tucha were still popular as tribute given to royal and noble lords in exchange for favors, as these were still indulgent items that were also the best in quality. There are two theories of how tea tree came to Japan. One is from China, and another possibility is trees were wildly grown in Japan from the ancient times. We don't have any evidence to prove that tea had grown wildly in Japan before it was introduced from China. However, the route and paths of tea from China are defined as following. During the Nara period, many scholarly monks were sent to China to study Buddhism. They were called Kensuishi. As they are coming back to China, many of them often brought tea as a souvenir. Japanese chado or sado, the way of tea, or chanuyu, hot water tea, is a time-honored institution in Japan. The Japanese tea ceremony is called chanuyu, sado, or simply ocha in Japanese. It is a choreographic ritual of preparing and serving Japanese green tea called matcha, together with traditional Japanese sweets to balance with the bitter taste of the tea. Japan, one of the first countries introduced to tea and start a tea ceremony. It became a staple drink for the religious classes of Japanese priests. In fact, the Japanese came to love the drink so much that they even created different ways of consuming it. One such way is called the Japanese tea ceremony, also known as the way of tea, a process focusing on how tea is made. This process involves aesthetically preparing a bowl of tea from one's heart. Another common variety of tea was developed by the Sowin Nagatani in 1738. The Japanese sencha, or roasted tea, which is an unfermented form of green tea and the most popular beverage in Japan today. Unlike the traditional green tea, matcha preparation involves covering the tea plants with shade cloths before they're harvested. This triggers the growth of leaves with better flavor and texture. The leaves are hand-selected, steamed briefly to stop fermentation then dried and aged in cold storage, which deepens the flavor. The dried leaves are then stone ground into a fine powder. The first opium war was the result of China's attempt to suppress the illegal opium trade, which had led to widespread addiction of China and was causing serious social and economic disruption. British traders were the primary source of the drug in China. The Second Opium War was the result of the desire of Great Britain and France to win additional commercial privileges in China, including the legalization of the opium trade, as well as to gain more legal and territorial concessions in China. Not China, Great Britain won the First Opium War, the opium trade continued and China had to compensate Great Britain for its losses, give Hong Kong Island to the British, and increase the number of treaty ports where the British could trade and reside. Great Britain and France won the Second Opium War. China's concession include legalizing the opium trade and providing for the opening of more ports in China foreign travel in Chinese interior, residents for Western envoys in Beijing, and freedom movement for Christian missionaries. China also gave Great Britain the southern portion 
of the Kowloon Peninsula adjacent to Hong Kong. Peace negotiations proceeded quickly, resulting in the Treaty of Nanjing, signed on August 29. By its provision, China was required to pay Britain a large indemnity, cede Hong Kong Island to the British, and increase the number of treaty ports where the British could trade and reside from one canton to five. Among the four additional designated ports was Shanghai, and the new access to foreigners there marked the beginnings of the city's transformation into one of China's major commercial interpreters. In 1516, the Portuguese brought back teas to Portugal, and in 1610, the Dutch started marketing the teas from China to Holland. In 1516, the Portuguese landed in China and brought back a wealth of knowledge back to Portugal. And in 1610, the Dutch brought all the teas from China and Europe. Catherine is the first British tea drinking queen. The introduction of tea in England is credited to the Portuguese princess Catherine of Braganza, who married Charles II. Catherine of Braganza who was aged 22 at that time, is the Portuguese princess who set the fashion for tea drinking in England. Catherine's fondness quickly made it fashionable in England and first the ladies of the court and gradually those farther removed from royal life developed a liking for the elegant drink. The Dutch were the first to bring tea to Europe. The East India Company is a British trading company incorporated on 31st of December 1600 for 15 years with the primary purpose of exporting the staple production of English woolen cloths and importing the products of the East Indies. The East India Company was the first company to record the Chinese usage of orange flavored tea which led to the development of Earl Grey tea. By the early 1700s, the British East India Company established itself as the dominant trading power and would go on to monopolize the tea trade with China. Trading stations sprang up in India, including hubs in Bombay, Bengal, and Madras. The company, acting as an imperial arm of England, would exercise significant political power in helping to create a wealthy and powerful British Empire. This included not only trading tea, but also the right to annex land, direct troops, and dictate British laws. The invention of the afternoon tea is credited to Anna Maria Russell, the Duchess of Bedford in 1840. During that time, dinner is served at nine o'clock. So the gap between lunch and dinner makes the Duchess of Bedford develop a sinking feeling, or in short, she's hungry. So she requested a cup of tea or a pot of tea, some tea sandwiches, some scones, and some pastries. And so that is the start of the afternoon tea. The English afternoon tea. The English afternoon tea is also called the low tea because it is set on a low table. And it's usually served around three o'clock in the afternoon to five o'clock in the afternoon. And it's usually consists of your finger tea sandwiches, your scones with Devonshire cream and uh, jam, and then you have your assortments of uh, pastries and chocolates. And of course, the star of the show is your teapot and your tea and your teacups. 
tea, which was an upper-class drink in continental Europe, became the infusion of every social class in Great Britain throughout the course of the 18th century and has remained so. Tea is a prominent feature of the British culture and society. In 17th and 18th century England, coffee houses were also popular places for people from all walks of life to go and meet, chat, gossip, and have fun whilst enjoying the latest fashion, a drink newly arrived in Europe from Turkey, coffee. By 1739, there were over 550 coffee houses in London. However, the coffee house fell out of favor towards the end of the 18th century as the new fashion for tea replaced coffee. Ships from Holland and Scandinavia brought tea to the British coast, then stood offshore while smugglers met them and unloaded the precious cargo in small vessels. The smugglers, often local fishermen, snacked the tea inland through the underground passages and hidden paths to special hiding places. One of the best hiding places was in the local parish church. Even smuggled tea was expensive, however, and therefore extremely profitable. So many smugglers began to adulterate the tea with other substances, such as willow, licorice, and slow leaves. Used tea leaves were also redried and added to fresh leaves. In the early 1800s, Ships carrying tea from the far east to Britain could take over a year to bring home their precious cargo. When the East India Company was given a monopoly on the tea trade in 1832, they realized the need to cut the time of this journey. The Americans actually designated the first clippers or streamlined tall masted vessels but the British were close behind. These clippers speed along at nearly 18 knots by contemporary accounts, nearly as fast as a modern ocean liner. The popular pleasure gardens of Ranelagh and Vauxhall in London began serving tea around 1730. An evening of dancing and watching fireworks would be capped by tea. The concept caught on, and soon, tea gardens opened all over Britain. Usually, the gardens were open on Saturday and Sunday, and an afternoon of entertainment and dancing would be highlighted by serving tea. Americans drank tea before the British and New Yorkers drank it first. Dutch mariners introduced the excellent China drink to Amsterdam and some historians say that peg-legged Peter Stuyvesant brought tea with him in 1647 when he was appointed governor of Manhattan. Tea traveled to America with the colonists who arrived from all European countries with some colonies like New Amsterdam, modern-day New York, being heavier tea drinkers than all of the England at the time. The Boston Tea Party is a political protest occurred on December 16, 1773 against Great Britain by the American colonists. They dumped 342 chests of tea, which is about 92,000 pounds, which at this age would cost about one million. So the colonists were against the Britain, and they were angry and furious about taxation without representation. The Boston Tea Party is a political protest that occurred on December 16, 1773, in the Griffin's Wharf in Boston, Massachusetts. The American colonists were frustrated and they were angry against Great Britain because of taxation without representation. 
342 chests of tea was dumped in the Boston Harbor, which is about 92,000 pounds of tea, which at this age would cost about one million. Leading colonists such as Samuel Adams and John Hancock participated in a group called Tea Party, which is about 60 colonies of the Sands of Liberty. The tea bag was invented in 1908 by New York tea importer Thomas Sullivan, who developed the practice to sending small sample of tea in silk bags, rather than in the customary tins to retailers. The purpose is to cut marketing costs rather than sending full-size tins for his customers to sample. A tea plantation owner, Richard Blanchenden, introduced iced tea to the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904. It was an extremely warm day, and his hot tea booth was being passed up by the crowds in favor of cold drinks. At that time, he was trying to market the newly imported hot black Indian tea. The Housekeeping in Old Virginia is a book originally published in 1879 by Marion Cabell Tyree that contains a pretty amazing look at the times directly before the 1900s. You'll find some pretty interesting recipes, home remedies, and most importantly, on page 50, the first ever sweet tea recipe. 80% of tea consumed in U.S. is served ice which is very popular in the South. Tea as a superfood. Tea consumption, especially green tea, may not be the magic bullet, but it can be incorporated in an overall healthy diet with whole grains, fish, fruits, and vegetables, and less red and processed meat, says Kisan, who is an assistant professor in the Department of Nutrition at the Harvard School of Public Health. The main health-promoting substances in tea are polyphenols, in particular catechins and epicatechins. Lab and animal studies say these molecules have anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. Harvard-led studies of large groups of people over time have found that tea are at low risk for diabetes and possibly cardiovascular disease. So keep calm and enjoy your cup. I hope you have enjoyed my small presentation about the origins and history of tea. So stay healthy, keep safe, and drink tea. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much.